Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Professor Hall and today we are going to look at fixing fragments in pairs and groups of sentences. So this is part three in our lecture series on fragments and if you haven't seen parts one and two you can click on my name. There is a playlist for sentence structure errors as well as grammar errors. So our plan for fragments. First, we're going to learn what is a fragment. We did that in the first two lectures. How do I find and fix this error? Now we're moving toward comprehension. Comprehension means that we kind of understand the things that we learned a little bit and we're going to be able to apply them. So today we're going to look at examples of fragments in pairs of sentences and short paragraphs. Later, we'll look at authentic materials, so fragments in real life, books, websites, magazines, those kind of things. Then you'll be doing practice, so taking the things that you learned and understood and practicing on your own and then writing and getting feedback. So if you make these errors, I will help to guide you a little bit on how to fix them. And then you'll be revising. And then we'll look at other sentence flaws or grammatical errors as well. Um, things like run on sentences and comma splices and that kind of thing. So the fragments. What is a fragment? Well, as you can see from Tony Jordan's book cover, um, pieces of that page, right? It's split up. Um, they're not complete or whole. And that's basically what a fragment is. It's a piece of a sentence. It's also known as an incomplete sentence and your instructor might use one or the other term. Unlike a complete sentence, a fragment, like these little pieces of paper over here, is missing something. So it could be missing a subject, could be missing a verb, or it could be missing both. It can also be a dependent clause. We talked about those in the sentence structures lecture as well. Um, a dependent clause is a group of words that starts with a conjunction, but it leaves us with unanswered questions. So some single fragment examples just for review. Um, yes, she's quite confused. Uh, this is our friend who's going to be leading us through this lesson. I just thought her picture was kind of funny. Missing a subject is missing. To travel through Europe. So here we have is, here we have to travel. Those are our verbs, but we don't have a subject. Missing a verb, the amazing basketball team. That's our subject. All of the books in the library. Books is our subject. Missing both, through the window and money. So money is a noun, but it's not doing or being the action, and it's not really set up to do or be the action. Same thing with window. Um, neither of those are complete thoughts, and they're both missing the subject and the verb. Dependent clause, because, that's our coordinating, or our subordinating conjunction, because I was sick, whenever Alice goes to sleep. So we're quite confused, like our friend here, and we're asking, huh? What? What do you mean? So let's fix them. Janice is missing. Jamal wants to travel to Europe. Adding a verb. The amazing basketball team won the match. All of the books in the library have been damaged. Adding both. I looked through the window. The thieves took jewels and money. All of these have the subject in blue and the verb in red. And with the dependent clause, what we're going to do is add an independent clause. So adding a simple sentence to that dependent clause turns it, if you remember, into a complex sentence. Um, I know that's a lot of terms all at once, but hopefully it kind of builds on what we've been learning. I stayed home from school because I was sick. Here, our independent clause comes first in the yellow. I stayed home from school. Whenever Alice goes to sleep, comma, her children play video games. So I stayed home from school would be a complete thought on its own. Her children play video games would also be a complete sentence. 
Um, but here we're going to add them to the dependent clause to make a full complex sentence so that the idea makes sense and can stand on its own and is complete, however you want to put it. Hmm, you might be saying to yourself, as your f our friend is here, question mark, what does this actually look like in real life? Because on English tests, you might see one fragment on its own and you might be asked to fix that. But in real life, our writing looks different. We don't write in single sentences. We write in groups of sentences and paragraphs and in pages. So here are some single sentences. A well-organized workspace. A new computer. Both of those, the first one doesn't have a verb. And the second one is a is missing a subject and a verb but that's not really what our writing looks in, like in real life so here is the group of sentences that these could be found in when Javier was redesigning his course for online instruction he realized he needed a few key things a well-organized workspace and a new computer so both of those fragments are highlighted there in the yellow and you can see, too, when I read it out loud, you might not hear the, um, the fact that it's a fragment. But when you look at it on a page, that's quite different. So a new way to fix fragments, not just adding a subject or a verb, but combining sentences. When Javier was redesigning his course for online instruction, he realized he would need a few key things. He would need a well-organized workspace. He would also need a new computer. So for both of these, I added the subject and the verb to the words that we had, the fragments that we had. But you can also combine the fragment with a sentence before or after it. When Javier was redesigning his course for online instruction, he realized he needed a few key things, including a well-organized workspace and a new computer. So now, instead of this short choppy sentences we have up here, if you remember with sentence variety, we talked about that quite a bit. And sometimes when people have a fragment error, their sentences become short and choppy because they just add the word that they need. And they don't think about the actual flow. But here, now we have a longer sentence and it makes more sense. Hey, okay. <laughs> it's so corny. Um, either one of these, though, would be grammatically correct. And it really does depend on what you think sounds better as the writer. So let's take a look at dependent clause fragments. Remember, they're dependent, like this kid can't walk on his own. Oh, so cute. Um, this little boy can't walk on his own. He's dependent on those hands holding him up. Because she cheated on him. Well, let's look at that in real life writing in a group of sentences. Derek broke up with Alicia because she cheated on him. She regrets the breakup, but he doesn't. Buried there in the middle <laughs> in that group of sentences. So let's fix it. Derek broke up with Alicia because she cheated on him. She regrets, regrets the breakup, but he doesn't. So here we've combined the sentences. We've added this first simple sentence to our dependent clause fragment. Now we have a complex sentence. And if you remember, she regrets the breakup is a simple sentence. He doesn't is a simple sentence. And they're joined here by the word but, which makes it compound. Um, just a little bit of review. But the real important thing here is that we've combined these two sentences. And now our question um, of because she cheated on him, well, why was answered in the sentence before it. Or what happened rather. So do we always combine a dependent clause with another sentence? Here's a dependent clause. Although Yasmin's business failed. Um, that's our dependent clause fragment. In real life, it might look like this. Although Yasmin's business failed. However, she was determined to try again and soon had plans for a new career. 
this is the type of dependent clause fragment that I see in my students' writing. Um, you really, if you tried to combine them, it wouldn't make sense. Although Yasmin's business failed, however, she was determined to try again and soon had plans for a new career. That it, It's so confusing because the although competes with the however, and it really doesn't make any sense. So what could we do instead? We can just get rid of that conjunction. Yasmin's business failed. However, she was determined to try again and soon had plans for a new career. So yeah, we took off the dependent clause word, um, that conjunction that we talked about, that word although, and by just getting rid of it, now the whole little paragraph or the whole pair of, the whole group of sentences now makes sense. So our first authentic material, this is from a student, um, one of my students, um, we've removed her name and all the in other information, but this was her paragraph. I asked them to analyze a song and tell me what the song meant. So she says, the song I chose to analyze is Drink a Beer by Luke Bryan. This song discusses losing a loved one and the emotions felt when you are faced with a heartbreaking loss. The tone, mood, imagery, and symbolism used in Drink a Beer are make this such a powerful and touching song. Well, there's a problem with verbs there as well, but that's okay. We will talk about that maybe another time. There is a deep meaning behind Drink a Beer, showing people how difficult it is to lose someone that you truly care about. So we have this ing word here showing that's our verb, right? What we don't have is a subject. So we have one sentence fragment, and it's the final paragraph paragraph of it's the final sentence of the paragraph and it's missing a subject and it also because it has the word showing it has an incomplete verb as well so we're going to have to add a couple of words here um, can we combine it with the previous sentence there is deep meaning behind drink beer showing people how difficult it is hmm let's take a look Really, if we combined it, I don't think it would make as much sense. So here, um, I added the subject and changed the verb. It shows people how difficult it is to lose someone you truly care about. Now the sentence is complete. Whoops. And we don't have um, that weird incomplete thought, that fragment in there. So let's let, take a look at another student paragraph. This one has a number of different fragments in it. Dorothea Dix, born in Maine in 1802. She taught school for many years, then volunteered to teach a Sunday school class in prison. What she found was shocking. Mental patients shared prison cells with criminals who were treated worse than animals. Wrote a long report, mental patients not being criminals, Many things changed because of Dorothea Dix. Now, you know, it's too bad because this is really interesting information. And I could tell from this paragraph, I can tell that the, the student did read about Dorothea Dix and understands the information. But the way that they're conveying it is quite confusing. So this is an example. This was not my student, but this is one I found online. And um, the picture here shows how the student eventually um, corrected the errors. So let's break it down. Dorothea Dix, here we go. I'm just going to go through for you guys. Okay, so the first sentence is missing a verb. Our subject is Dorothea Dix. The second sentence is missing a subject, so we have the verb born. The third sentence is correct. She is our subject, taught is our verb. Then volunteered, so we have volunteered verb but no subject. What she found was shocking. She is our subject and found <laughs> is our verb. Mental patients is a subject, but there's no verb there. Shared prison cells. Shared is a verb, but we don't have a subject. Wrote a long report, has a verb, but no subject. 
mental patients not being criminals. So this is kind of weird. I It has a subject. It has a verb word, but it doesn't have a complete verb. And this word being, I see students get into trouble with all the time. Um, they'll use the word being as if it's a complete verb and it's really not. And then our last sentence is fine. So out of 10 sentences here, we have only three that are correct. And, um, oh, my dog is playing with a toy. Sorry, guys. Um, we have three that are correct and the rest have errors. So um, here, the student both added to these sentences and combined them. So Dorothea Dix was born in Maine in 1802. Those two sentences are now combined in the yellow. She taught school for many years. Then she volunteered to teach a Sunday school class. So we have the added subject she. What she found was shocking. Mental patients shared prison cells with criminals. There, Those two sentences there have been combined. Dorothea, um, that's actually should be in blue because that's an addition, wrote a long report about mental hospitals. That's another addition about mental patients not being criminals. Many things changed because of Dorothea Dix. Now, um, Dorothea wrote a long report about mental patients not being criminals is still sort of awkward, but there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't think that the flow is that great. But if you turned this into me, I would just be like, that sentence is a little bit awkward. But grammatically, it is correct because we've combined the sentences and added words into the sentences as well. So this is what your real life <laughs> revising might look like. Sometimes you might have to add a subject or a verb or both. And sometimes you might combine the sentences together um, with, if you have a fragment, maybe it's combined with the sentence before it, maybe it's combined with a sentence after it to help your reader make sense of what you're trying to say. So let's review. Okay. <laughs> She's happy. A fragment is another term for an incomplete sentence. On a test, we might just add a subject or a verb or pick the correct thing for multiple choice, right? Um, or we might add an independent clause to a dependent clause fragment. But in real life with more than one sentence at a time, a lot of times we have options. We might add a word or two, adding in that subject or verb, or we might combine the fragment with the sentence before it or after it. And in the case of dependent clauses, we might just delete words. Um, we might delete the dependent clause word or group of words to make it be a full complete thought. And we've looked at all of those options. So now, not only the sentence is complete, but the writing, I said you're reading, what your reader is looking at or your writing is clear and easy to understand. Next time, we're going to look at authentic materials, so things outside the classroom. What do these fragments look like in real life? But that's it for today, and if you have questions, let me know in the comments.